Foundation members from four countries hold a free clinic in Colombo, Sri Lanka, serving nearly 4,000 residents. In the aftermath of Typhoon Haido, city volunteers check on the conditions of underprivileged families in Dongguan, China. Welcome to The Headlines, I'm Siri Su, thank you for joining us. We begin today's program with some news from Sri Lanka. In Colombo, TIMA members from Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia and the Philippines work together to hold a three-day free clinic. At the free clinic, services from five medical departments were offered. The medical volunteers estimate that they've provided medical services to nearly 4,000 local residents. Instead of being afraid, these children in Sri Lanka look forward to seeing a dentist. The Sri Lankan woman has come to seek medical treatment upon learning a city medical team is holding a free clinic. The last time I had dental scaling was four years ago. It is really comfortable to have dental scaling this time. The dentists are using two classrooms to separately do dental fillings and scaling, as well as teach children how to care for their teeth. Slowly move to the front. Gum protection is actually closely related to the caring of their bodies. Therefore, we think the patient must know how to protect their teeth. At the free clinic in Sri Lanka, besides the medical team from Singapore who comes every year, medical volunteers from Taiwan, Malaysia and the Philippines have also come to serve. Nearly 200 volunteers provide dental care, internal medicine, TCM, ophthalmology and surgical services, serving about 4,000 people. The 12-year-old girl's head and hands shake as she writes. Her condition has caught the attention of the free clinic team. Dr. Hong Hongdian asks the girl to balance her limbs to test the coordination of her nerves, finding out the cause of her problem. Her right side is not as coordinated. This could be a sign of Chulet's syndrome. The girl actually knows that her condition is getting worse, but she cannot afford more medical costs because of her family's financial situation. She has seen other daughters and they told her to wait till she is older. Since the girl needs to go to big hospitals to undergo more detailed tests, city volunteers are trying to understand her family's condition, ready to offer for their assistance. Many residents in Sri Lanka cannot afford to buy new glasses since their monthly salary is usually not high. Therefore, many residents do not wear eyeglasses even though they have blurred vision. To help solve their problem, Suji set up an eyeglasses prescription section at the recent free clinic. In addition to checking the vision of the patients, the medical team also distributed free eyeglasses to them. Let's take a look. In Sri Lanka, it costs at least 110 US dollars to buy a new pair of eyeglasses. However, the average monthly salary of the laborers here is about 235 US dollars. Therefore, it is quite a heavy burden for local residents to buy a pair of eyeglasses. Upon learning of the news regarding the eyeglasses distribution, local residents have hurried to wait in line when checking the vision of the seniors at the first station. The volunteers found that many of them have had eye problems for a real long time. He cannot see, so we asked him to go to another station to examine his vision one more time. This medical team brought an optometry machine to provide a more accurate examination. Later, the optometrist will adjust the degree of the lenses. Some of them can get used to it without wearing eyeglasses, even though they suffer 100 degrees of myopia. However, for those who have presbyopia, they cannot get used to it since they cannot see clearly. Most of their eyes are dry because they spend a lot of effort staring at things. <laughs> The eyeglass frames are delivered from Singapore and the lenses are produced by local factories. As soon as the patients put on their new eyeglasses, they can not only see everything clearly, but many of them feel as happy and loved as this grandmother. 
Also at the recent free clinic held by Tsuji in Sri Lanka, in terms of its dental services, 19 dentists from Singapore, Taiwan and the Philippines work together to solve the problems encountered by the patients. The services included teeth extraction, dental cleaning and root canal therapy. Despite the poor environment of the venue, the doctors all said that they would try their best to relieve the patient's pain. This 16-year-old girl has been suffering from a toothache for two weeks. Her father brought her to Tsuji's free clinic to seek medical assistance. It is quite expensive to extract a wisdom tooth here. At this free clinic, the doctor helped her extract it for free, allowing us to save a lot of money. This is a great help to us. At this free clinic held by Tsuji, medical services for five different departments are provided. At the departments of dentistry, Dr. Xie Jinglong brought his own microscope and light in hopes of shortening the treatment's time. I think at this free clinic, we should offer the same medical services as that of when we work in our own clinics. In this hard environment and with poor lightning, most of the dentists would rather choose to do simple things such as tooth extraction. However, when we stand in the patient's shoes, we may have different thoughts. With this compassion and the assistance of doctors from different countries, 346 patients were served in just one day. This Tima doctor from Singapore even brought his daughter to help out. There are 30-some doctors here at this event, but actually there are more than 100 volunteers who support this event. I want to let my daughter know that organizing this free clinic is not easy. After we helped them extract teeth, the teeth no longer hurt, so they felt happier. When they left, they all felt grateful and felt at ease. I feel very happy being able to help them. The classroom serves as the venue for this free clinic. Doctors here have been busy solving the problems for the patients the whole day, saying they are happy to relieve the pain of all patients who need care. In our continuing series on Malaysia, we take a look at the country's awareness of environmental protection. Malaysia's population density is much lower than that of Taiwan, but experts say that many citizens have little concept of environmental awareness. The country is rich in palm oil, which is a high economic crop. However, the reliance on palm oil leads the country to rely on grain imports. Furthermore, previous practices of slash and burn farming have taken their toll on the environment. Although Malaysia has improved its farming technique, smog from Indonesia is still harming Malaysia's environment. Here is our in-depth report. Climate change is uh, now being regarded as one of the global phenomena. Uh, and Malaysia is not been, uh, what they call, uh, been left away from this uh, climate. It's not, uh, it's also facing the same The sea level rise problem uh, in the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia, uh, Sabah and Sarawak, we have already projected that the sea level rise has increased from 0.9 cm per year. Previously, Malaysia suffered very few natural disasters, but more and more have appeared in recent years. Natural law has been destroyed, so the impact on the world will be very long. The weather has changed dramatically, and its effect has begun to affect the population. Climate change has also contributed to a lot of things, such as insufficient food, water shortages, and so we must advance agriculture through technology. Malaysia's climate is quite hot and suitable for planting palms, which produce palm oil. So far, 5.74 million hectares have been cultivated with this crop, which is equivalent to 1.6 times the size of Taiwan. In this country, 70% of the crop are palm, which can produce 5 metric tons of palm oil per hectare. This is considered to be a high-yield economic crop. After planting palms, two years later it can be harvested. Palm fruit is perennial, with no particular harvest season, as they grow year-round. This is the flesh and kernel of the palm fruit, with palm oil accounting for about 50% of its weight. The endocarp can be used for activated carbon. Palm oil has brought huge benefits to Malaysia, which leads the world in production, though in recent years, neighboring Indonesia along the equator has produced even more. These two countries account for some 90% of global production. 
However, ignoring the environmental impacts does not come without a price, as traditional palm cultivation has led to air pollution. Before, 100 percent of our fertilizers were chemical, and we also used pesticides, and we also slashes and burned the fields. Illegal fires have been harmful to the environment. Some of the smoke has also drifted over from Indonesia, causing the suspension of flights in Malaysia, as well as school closures. Air pollution has also caused respiratory diseases and countless numbers of people. Malaysia's humanistic concepts and development are much like other countries, as humanistic matters are out of balance with construction which has created a lot of social problems. With no expected change in continued cultivation of palms, Taiwan's environmentally friendly practices may slow down the negative impact on the environment. We see a lot of fertile soil in Malaysia, and the government hasn't done much in education. So I think it's a good time to become involved and utilize some of Taiwan's experience, which can be applied in Southeast Asian countries. Tony Pung studies soil and has developed a bioorganic fertilizer. For this, he acquired a large amount of coca and coffee residue, which he recycles. What we call biochemical organic fertilizer utilizes natural raw materials, such as discarded material, which we can turn into fertilizer. Residual organic matter is put through a technological process, which involves microorganisms to produce a high-tech agricultural fertilizer. If you talk about environmental protection, farmers will not accept it. But when you discuss technology and how it can help the environment of preventing farmers from wasting their fertilizer. To improve the environment, the government began environmental certification and endorsement by the Palm Oil Board. Pong's bioorganic fertilizer has gotten more visibility as he not only sells fertilizer to palm orchards, but also recycles palm residue. We turn it into a fertilizer from all cosmos. And then uh, all the fertilizer will return back into the, into the estate. We have used Taiwan's many years of agricultural experience, as well as our ideas on how to make the soil more fertile. <laughs>
In China, after Typhoon Haito devastated Guangdong province, city volunteers mobilized to visit underprivileged families who were affected in Dongguan. As the volunteers calmed the residents' anxious minds, the residents felt a sense of relief. The day after Typhoon Hato has left, there are still floods in Humenchang, Dongguan, Guangdong province. Zhiji volunteer Deng Huixin, who was working in her workshop in an underground shopping district, described her fear at that time. The water came very quickly. It poured in from every direction. We couldn't save our goods, so we had to evacuate. Worrying about the underprivileged people, Zhiji volunteers went out to visit them. When Grandma Ye in Xinwan community sees the volunteers, she grabs her hands and feels relieved. The dike near the Xinwan community in Human Town was built very tall, so the area was not flooded at this time. The chief volunteers came to evaluate the condition and also bring oatmeal to a care recipient, Grandma Li. Pour in hot water and it can become breakfast. The chief volunteers' visit brings peace of mind to every victim. They also hope the elderly will be safe and sound forever. Also in Guangdong of China, Typhoon Haito recently devastated Zhuhai. In its aftermath, city volunteers worked together with the sanitation workers to clean up the streets. In addition, the volunteers provided vegetarian meals and desserts to the sanitation workers and local residents at the occasion. Their efforts have received positive feedback, and many people praised city volunteers for their teamwork. Looking at the fallen trees, one can see the impact of Typhoon Haito. City volunteers in Zhuhai are working with the sanitation workers to restore the streets to its former look. I did not do much. I only did my share. It is everyone's joint effort. Seeing how the Cixi brothers and sisters overcome difficulties to cut down the dangerous tree branches, I can see their teamwork. It is really encouraging to see how Cixi volunteers work with one heart. <laughs> Working under the heat, everyone is soaked with sweat. Therefore, the volunteers have provided vegetarian meals and desserts. The feedback from the volunteers and sanitation workers is that the desserts are delicious and the meals are nutritious. They think they are quite tasty. Since August 24th, for three consecutive days, city volunteers have distributed a total of 330 meals. They also seized the occasion to promote vegetarianism. <laughs> In Thailand, the Ministry of Education initiated a comprehensive teacher development plan, which allows teachers to select certain courses to improve their teaching quality. Among the selective courses, a course on the spirit of public service is provided. A professor has incorporated Siji's principles into this particular course. Let's learn more about how teachers are benefiting from this course. Carrying backpacks and bags, 38 teachers from 21 schools in 17 provinces came to Pankak Jin Suho to attend a training class. This training class will transmit Siji's ideologies to them. They won't just sit and listen, and we hope they'll be able to be in touch with wholesome ideals and be inspired to do good deeds. This training course on Tsiji is one of the training lessons for teachers in Thailand. The Office of Basic Education Commission started a comprehensive development plan for teachers this year and will fund each one of 400,000 teachers the equivalence of 299 US dollars so they can take courses to improve their teaching quality. Dr. Rian Sri Tong, a professor at Pranangkong Rajabad University and also a Tsiji volunteer, recommended to involve Tsiji's ideas into the course on spirit of public welfare. It is now one of over 1,400 training courses.
there's one senior who has been hospitalized for three months, but none of her descendants is caring for her, so we came to help. We wish the grandma recovers soon. <laughs> I've been looking after my mom, so after I go back, I'll take better care of her and my family. <laughs> the four-day lesson included a lot of materials that touched the teachers who did not know Tsuji before. Now they have received their certificates, they will pass forward the seed of goodness. In our next report, we learn from enterprises and individuals in Taiwan different ways to care for patients. To help the Genesis Social Welfare Foundation, who cares for those in a persistent vegetative state, Elder Moda Cosmetics Groups organized a charity fair to raise funds. Meanwhile, a patient from Taichung Tsuji Hospital, who has successfully battled cancer, invited friends to give dance performances to entertain patients at the hospital. Let's take a look. Although these eight dancers are not professionals, they give excellent performances with sincerity to comfort patients who come here to seek medical treatments. I also receive medical treatment at Haichung Tsuji Hospital, so I want to activate my body through dancing. I found I have an interest in dancing. As dancers, each of us hope that we can look as elegant and beautiful as Mona Lisa in that painting. This care visit is led by Wu Wanhua. In the past, she once suffered from cancer, so she has invited her friends to accompany seniors at the hospital's geriatric daycare center. <laughs> Seeing that they're full of energy, I also want to dance with them. Here at Genesis Social Welfare Foundation's Banqiao branch in New Taipei City, enterprises work together to organize a charity fair. We are the organizer of this event. We hope through this activity we can inspire more people to help Genesis Social Welfare Foundation fulfill their missions. Currently in the Banqiao branch, we take care of 56 residents who are in persistent vegetative state. Because they are unable to express their feelings, we have to ask our professional staff to help to understand what they want to express. Each PVS patient has a professional nurse, a caregiver, and a social worker to take care of them, allowing their families to receive some rest. With the love from enterprises and the society, they will never be ignored. Hurricane Harvey made landfall in Texas, the United States, on the 25th, devastating Houston. To prepare for disaster relief work once the floodwaters recede, Tsuji headquarters in Hualien held a video conference with Tsuji U.S. headquarters, Tsuji Texas chapter, and Tsuji Dallas chapter. We'll leave you with these images at the end of our program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>